Welcome to New Day Cleveland. This show is all about food, and who doesn't love food, right? But we're talking about home cooking, and home cooking is pretty important right now because we're all spending a lot of extra time in the kitchen. So I've got some great ideas for you. I think they're pretty good. See what you think. Let's start out with some hearty dishes, something for a crowd. Hey, so I thought we'd go back to an old favorite that a lot of folks really like. Got a lot of great response to this. It's gonna be chicken and sausage. And we're gonna make it in the slow cooker, so that way if you're working in the yard, you don't have to be in the house cooking and get this whole thing together. So we're gonna start with 10 boneless, skinless chicken thighs. And what we're gonna do is just drop those right in the bottom of our slow cooker. We're gonna cook this for about seven hours. You go seven or eight hours on low. Cook it a little faster on high if you want. Okay, we got that in there, right? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our favorite seasoning. I use sort of like an emerald mix. We're gonna put some seasoning on there because you gotta have some seasoning on the bottom. The sausage is gonna be chorizo. That's gonna give us some, some good flavors. Now the potatoes, what I did ahead of time was I peeled them, but I didn't cut them ahead of time because when you do, what happens is they turn black because they have to be submerged. So we're gonna put these in at the last minute just before we start our dish. And I'm gonna make them sort of chunky, you see that? Okay, just one. I'm gonna line those up over the top of that. Okay. And number two. You could slice them ahead of time, but then you have to leave the slices in the water. Okay, here we go. Get to that one. Put these in. Now, we're gonna to top it with the chorizo. So I've got four links here. It's about, about eight ounces, a little bit more than that. So we're gonna just put the links right on top. That way I don't have to deal with them too much. Come right across the top like that. So this is a nice thing, you can set it up early. It's a little spicy and there's a lot of ways you can serve it. You got potatoes in it already, but you can put it over rice if you want. Okay, now we're gonna put the onions on the top. This is one onion and I cut that a little thick also because we wanna maintain a little integrity with these ingredients. We don't all dissolve on us and fall apart. So I got that in there. Now what do we need? We need a little bit of a dressing, a little juice in there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take three quarters of a cup of chicken stock. I use that better than bullion stuff all the time. I love it. 14 ounce can of diced tomatoes with the juice. Brown sugar, half a cup, and how about some garlic? Three or four cloves of garlic. So we're gonna mix that up a little bit because we want the sugar to dissolve. Ooh, we're coming down the stretch. This is all the work it's gonna take in the beginning. Chicken and sausage in the slow cooker. Okay, I've got that together, right? We're gonna pour that over the top. Oh boy, look how good that's gonna be. We're gonna put the top on. And then what we're gonna do is, we're gonna go over here and we're gonna go select, not four, not six, unless we're going on high. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go on eight, on low, and then we'll have some delicious food. Ah, here we go, bubbling delicious. Look at that, ready to go, nice and tender, I'm sure. Got a plate right here, we'll plate some up a little bit. Looks like it's a little hot. I know if Natalie was here, she would, she would just take a big bite of this right now. But there we got the potatoes, we got some sausage, and go down the bottom and get some chicken. And there you go, and you know what? You can serve this over rice if you like. Or you could add some peas like in the last like half hour or so or something like that, make it more like a stew. But there you go, there you have it. And I want to get a little taste of this to see how it is. I love the sausage. Spicy, delicious, good, but guess what? I got another idea too. You might want to try this at home. Make a little burrito out of it. So I'll put some right in the middle. And I'll tell you, this is going to be good. It's going to be very good. This is another Mossman Pantry Raid. Just try that in just a second. It's gonna be good. Enjoy! And just a little reminder, we always talk about those dry rubs or emerald seasoning. You can find the recipes for those online. Okay, how about something, uh, well, you look in the pantry and you find a whole bunch of beans, what do you do? You make vegetarian style chili. Well, I know times have changed a little bit, folks, but hey, we still have to eat, right? And you know, I always say I like to go to the store once a day to get all my food together. 
Can't do that anymore, so what I have to do is go back to the pantry. That's right. I raided the pantry, got to look at what's in there. So I had a whole bunch of cans and stuff that's been back there. Who knows how long, along with some pasta, some rice, and all kinds of things. And I see a whole bunch of beans. So I thought, why don't we put together some ingredients that would be great for a little bean chili. And I've got some tomato sauce. I've got some black beans, some white beans. I've got some Mexican corn. I'm going to use some onions, a little bit of garlic. Uh, I'm going to put carrot in this too, because I have a carrot in the freezer. And I brought it out thawed it out, gonna cook it up, along with some seasonings that I had in the spice cabinet. So we're gonna start this little chili job here. And I've got an onion in here that I'm softening up. One onion, and I've got three cloves of garlic, I'm gonna get that going in there, and the carrot. So you're gonna soften this up a little bit. Just get that baby going. Maybe a little salt, not too much salt. Maybe a little cracked pepper on top of that. And when it starts to soften, just soften a little bit, you start adding some more items, like the seasonings. So I've got a tablespoon of cumin, I've got a teaspoon of oregano, a quarter teaspoon of cayenne, a little black pepper, a little salt. I'm going to add to that my secret ingredient. I am using taco mix. Look at that. So I'm going to take one of those instead of chili powder, because you might have one of these hidden back here. That's what I had. I'm going to mix that in here. So that's going to be sort of my chili flavor. I'm going to put in a little can of those lovely green chilies that I always tell you about that I love so much. Get that going, start to smell like something like chili maybe a little bit. And then we're going to go for some tomatoes. 28 ounces of crushed tomatoes. If you got chopped tomatoes, that's okay. If you got ketchup and some water, you might even do with that. But put that in there a little bit. And then we start going with all the good stuff. We're going to go with black beans. Drain the beans and rinse them. That's what I say or else they'll be talking to you later if you know what I mean. Throw in some chili beans. I've got these chili beans that have a little bit of chili sauce. So those you don't drain. A little bit of chili sauce goes in there too. White beans, so like white beans, cannellini, kidney beans, whatever you want to call them. And then I thought, I saw this box of Mexican corn. We're going to put that in there, along with a little beer. And we're going to cook this baby for about 45 minutes and see what happens. 45 minutes later, here's what we got. We're going to bring up this little chili. Remember, it's meatless. But I got to tell you, I think it's going to taste pretty good. Looks delicious, it smells great. I'm gonna put it down here a little bit. We say we put a little sour cream on it. Like that. If you don't have sour cream, so what? Put a little parsley on it. If you don't have that, put some dried herbs on it. Maybe crunch a little Fritos on it. Give it a little taste. As my friend Natalie Herbig says, that's pretty good. So the next time you go to the store and you buy some beans, buy some extra beans. They don't cost much and you can use them for a lot. Okay, when we come back, we've got more New Day Cleveland outside. Welcome back to New Day Cleveland. It's a show all about home cooking. And when you talk about home cooking, I think outdoors is a pretty good idea, right? We're gonna fire up the grill, make some ribs. Well, everyone always says to me, I don't have time to make ribs. Well, guess what? A lot of us have a lot of time right now. So when I made the Moss Man Pantry Raid, I went to the freezer and I found ribs. So check out these beautiful ribs, baby back ribs. Easy to do. So what you do is you start off by putting them upside down and you tear the little membrane off the back. Mine already had it torn off, so I didn't have to do that. You just get that out of the way, that way the flavors go in, and you paint it up with mustard, yellow mustard. And believe me, this mustard is not gonna make it taste like mustard. This is just like a glue to hold on our dry rub. And of course, I have my favorite dry rub, so I'm gonna use that. But if you don't have your favorite dry rub from the store, you can just make it from your own pantry. Just look around, find some salt, some pepper, that sort of thing, and use it liberally. Put it liberally all over the ribs, and then, Take it outside, throw it on the grill, 230 degrees. If you don't have a grill, just put it in the oven. Okay, it's been two hours, right? Now we're gonna go back in the grill and we're gonna wrap them up in tin foil. Like a lot of people call this method two hours, two hours and one, two, two, one. But for my middle section, I like it to be an hour and a half or an hour and 45 minutes. You know why? Because I don't want the meat to fall off the bones. I want it to stick just a little bit. So we're gonna go, let's go an hour and a half and see what happens. There you go. Okay, they've been in one hour and 45 minutes in the, well, a lot of people do it two hours there. Like I said, I like to make sure that I get them 
to stick to the bone a little bit. I don't like the meat to fall right off the bone. So there we go, we got it going. So it was two hours in the beginning, an hour. Get that piece of foil out of there. Don't want to cook any foil, right? Hour and 45 minutes, hour and 30 minutes, and now for the final hour, we're gonna cook it just like this. See how it looks a little like a little wet and damp? Well, for the next hour, we're gonna come in every like 15 minutes or so, put a little sauce on them. It's gonna be fantastic. Okay, so check it out. The ribs have come out. They've been cooking two hours, an hour and a half, and then another hour. Let's see what they look like here, guys. Mossman Pantry Raid. Look at this nice little rib here. Oh, I actually got two of them here. I'm gonna pull it apart. Look how nice and tender. Still sticks to the bone a little bit. That's just the way I like it. And I think this just might be the way you like it. Thank you. Another Mossman Pantry Raid. Good. Good. And I just want to remind you, if you don't have a grill, don't worry about it. Just make the ribs in the oven. Just follow the same temperatures and time guidelines and you'll be in great shape. And speaking of great shape, how about some wings? Okay, this is it. This is what I call my best ever wings and they're best ever because they're really easy to make. Check them out. We make them on the grill or you can make them in the oven. And I'm going to tell you how to do this. So in the oven, 275 degrees on the grill, 275 degrees, indirect heat. But it all starts with the rub, and I always say use your favorite rub. Well, I'm gonna tell you how to make a rub that might end up being your favorite rub for wings or who knows what else, but it's easy to put together. So what you do is you get three tablespoons of paprika, a tablespoon of garlic powder, you get a tablespoon of onion powder, a tablespoon of chili powder, a tablespoon of kosher salt, that's the big crunchy salt, a teaspoon of mustard powder, and a teaspoon of chipotle powder, and you stir that all around. Now the good news about this is, this is enough for about two recipes. So you're not gonna use it all, you can have it and use it later. And the other thing I suggest you do is make sure you buy the paprika and all that kind of stuff, maybe at Gallucci's or Penzi's or one of those places where you can get big amounts so you're not paying way too much money out of that little jar like you get at the grocery store. Now you get the chicken wings. So what you want to do is you want to try to get the chicken wings already cut up into nice pieces, the two, the two nice segments, and you put those together and you stir in your rub. Now you're gonna use about half of the rub. We've got five pounds of wings. Five pounds of wings, mix it with the rub, and you make sure it's all over. Take your time and you'll see it sort of melt onto the wings. Get it sitting there. And if you're really lucky and you have some extra time, what you might want to do is do this whole section up to now and then put the wings in the refrigerator uh, for a couple hours or, or even overnight. And what happens is the flavors go into the wings and the wings dry out a little bit. And when the wings dry out, especially from that salt in there, it helps them be extra, extra crispy. Now what you do is you take them to the grill. You take them to the grill and you line them up all flat, nice and flat, and you cook them 275 degrees for 45 minutes. 45 minutes, they're just gonna cook. Okay, 45 minutes later, we take a look at these things and it, they look like they doubled in size, right? Well, when I started making this, the boys heard I was making this, and next thing you know, all their buddies are coming over. So we have 10 pounds, well, eight to 10 pounds of wings in here. So I used the rest of my powder, I got the wings on the grill, and we're going another 45 minutes. They're in there, another 45 minutes, so maybe an hour, 275 degrees, and we should have some beautiful, delicious wings. Well, that took a long time because I was really anxious to get these babies out and check them out, folks. Look how nice they look, just like they looked a couple minutes ago. Look at that, we're gonna put them on the grill here, I mean, on a platter. And now I say use the sauce of your choice. So it's easy to make the Frank sauce. You just go on their website or you read it right off the bottle so it's easy to make. You melt a little butter with the Franks and you put it together like that. My son likes the special sauce he sends away for. Hey, do you guys like sauce on the ribs? I mean, on the uh, chicken wings? Yeah, they like, they like wings with sauce. Okay, so there we go. I want to tell you something though. Take a look at these. They're a really nice close look. They're about eight pounds of them. I'm gonna take this one right here and look how nice and crispy it is. And now we're gonna take a bite. Okay, here we go. Here we go. It's good. And a reminder again, you can make these wings indoors. Just follow the temperatures and the time guidelines and you'll be fine. And how many wings do you make? As many as you can find because there's never enough. When we come back, we're going to talk about making some things you thought you'd never try to make. And it's easy.
Welcome back to New Day Cleveland. We're talking about home cooking. And for a lot of folks, risotto wouldn't be home cooking, would it? Might be a little difficult. Well, it's not difficult at all. It's easy. Check it out. Oh boy, look in that pot, folks. Another Mossman pantry raid. And I've got some uh, butter cooking here along with some onions. And guess what? This is the foundation to risotto. That's right, we're gonna make risotto. And today we're gonna use some Parmesan cheese in it. We're gonna put some peas in it and some mushrooms. And uh, we're gonna get this thing going. I chopped up some mushrooms a little bit earlier and I tossed them in a saute pan. So when you make risotto with mushrooms, you can put them in either raw or sauteed. I put them in saute because you get a little bit of that butter flavor and you get a little bit of that caramelization. Okay, now the ingredients for today's risotto, we've got risotto arborio rice. So make sure you get arborio rice, or one that says it's for risotto. We're gonna use some broth today, chicken broth. And you can either get it in the box or you can make it yourself in that better than broth mixture that I like so much. We've got Onions in here, of course, about a half an onion. We got one clove of garlic we're gonna put in. We got some peas, some parsley. We've got the onions in there cooking. See how they're just starting to get a little bit of gold around the edges? And I tell you, it really works nice. I got these new Volrath pans, Volrath pans from Dean Supply, and it's just the perfect size and everything. See a little golden in there? So now I'm gonna put in the rice, the risotto, and we're gonna let that risotto cook in here just about one minute. One minute later, we're gonna add a little bit of wine. So we're gonna just let the garlic and the onions soak that flavor right into the rice. You can use any kind of white wine, dry white wine. This one's from Italy. We're gonna put a half a cup in here. Look how much the rice likes that, huh? <clears throat> We're gonna cook that around a little bit until it totally evaporates. When it totally evaporates, we're gonna start working in six cups of chicken broth. That wine really burns off in a hurry. It's got the flavor in the rice right now. So now we're gonna start putting in some chicken broth, one cup at a time. So I've got this nice, Chicken broth going over here, one cup at a time. And the great thing about this chicken broth, I've got it in this pan over here, cooking really nice. This is another one of those Volroth pans, but you know what else I did? I found this at Dean Supply also. I found this really nice pitcher and uh, heat it up, put it in here, and you just pour it in a cup at a time, so that makes it really easy. So we're gonna do this about one cup at a time for the next 15 minutes and we'll be ready to go. Okay, see how it's bubbling now? You can just start to see the rice again. So now it's time to put a little more broth in there, another cup. Okay, I said six cups of broth. You might only need five. So it starts to thicken up like this and it's just almost starting to get a little tender. That's when you throw in some mushrooms. So we're gonna throw in the sauteed mushrooms. You can put them in raw if you like, but I think you get more flavor this way. We're gonna stir these in, a little more broth, and we're just a couple minutes away. See how it's all puffed up a little bit, maybe a little more broth, but just before the last cup of broth, I'm gonna drop in a cup full of frozen peas. And I like frozen because they'll cook in there and then they won't get mushy. So make sure they're frozen when you put them in there. I think that's great. And I'll tell you what, a couple more minutes and we're home. So there it is 20 minutes later, we got the peas, we got the mushrooms, we got the risotto. It's ready to go. Now what we do is we're gonna drop in about a third of a cup of nice Parmesan cheese. Sometimes I put a half a cup in, sometimes I put even more, just whatever you like. And then a little parsley. And we're gonna plate this baby up. I gotta tell you, 20 minutes, easy to do. Recipe is on the website. Serve it up like that. Not too tight, you want it a little loose. That'll make it nice. And there we go, we got this going here. And what do we do with the extra wine? Huh, you know what we're gonna do with this. That's another Mossman Pantry Raid. It's risotto, and I think you're gonna like it. Good good. Every time I see risotto, I have to laugh. Jack Black says he loves risotto, but everyone loves it. Easy to make as you saw. Okay, now we're going to talk about making mussels. Check them out. Okay, to make mussels, you don't go like this. What you do is you get about two and a half pounds of mussels, three pounds of mussels, and you make sure they're nice and clean. You rinse them off and you go through each one to look at them. If they're closed, they're good. If they're open, you throw them away. But one thing you look for is like a little bit of a tiny beard, like little pieces of whiskers, but they're not whiskers, they're actually rope. So when they harvest these, that's how they get them. They get them right off of a rope. They're sort of farm raised. So to cook them's really easy. You get a big pot going, you throw in a couple tablespoons of olive oil, you throw in a few tablespoons of shallot. You get some garlic in there and a little bit of red pepper just for color. Some people put a little bit of tomato in there. And what you do is you soften it up in a big pan oh, for about two or three minutes until it gets nice and soft. Okay, so now you take your mussels 
and you take them over here and you just drop them in. Just drop them in. Hey, here, come take a look at that. There you go. We're gonna put about half of our parsley in there. We've got a half a cup of parsley. I picked this out of the garden. I started a little herb garden while I was sitting around over here. So we got a little parsley in here. And most importantly of all, we're gonna add a little bit of white wine. A little bit's two cups at this point. So we're gonna put two cups of white wine in here. See, that's one cup, right? That's two cups, right? And there you go. And they're gonna cook in here for about three or four minutes. They start to open. That's when they're gonna be ready. The minute they open up, then we're gonna make a little bit of a sauce for them. Okay, we got all the mussels out. We've got the sauce reducing a little bit. So we got those nice shallots, garlic, little red pepper. Some people put chopped tomato in there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn off my heat. I'm gonna drop in a couple tablespoons of cold butter, cut into four pieces like this. And we're gonna whisk, 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 whisk. And then we're gonna put in the rest of our parsley. You see this sauce is beginning to come together. What you're gonna have is something that is truly delicious. Let me find a little number here. We're gonna pick this up and put the sauce on top. And then what you do is you pass this around the table. Give everybody a couple pieces of bread, a little bowl, and then we put a little bit more of the sauce on the side. Sauce on the side, and that way everyone can do just like this. They can dip in here, a little bit of that nice juice, which might be the best part. Go in here, have a little muscle. We have muscle. And the most important thing about mussels, do not overcook them. You don't want tough mussels. Okay, when we come back, everyone says, Mossman, what's your favorite food? Italian. Welcome back to New Day Cleveland. Okay, I was growing up, right? My mom was English and Irish, and my dad was Polish. So what was my favorite food? Italian. Go figure. And this next dish is the favorite at Chateau Moss. Hey, so check it out. I want you guys to see this here. This is at Chateau Moss. This is the creme de la creme. This is like a breaded chicken breast. And it's really a little special the way we do it, but it's not so special that you can't do it yourself. It's really easy to do. So we got this baby cooking here, and here's how it started. It started with a regular chicken breast, and what you do is you pound it out. You pound it out gently. You put it in that two gallon freezer bag, and it doesn't spit all over the place, it doesn't spatter, and it's nice and thick, and you have a lot of control over it, and it really gets nice and thin. And then you gotta set up your breading ingredients. And the best way to do that is to get three dishes out. One, you put a flour in it. You know, like a half a cup, three quarters of a cup of flour. Another one, you put an egg and a little milk in. And the last one, you put the panko breadcrumbs in. Now these panko breadcrumbs are special. They're very crispy, they're very flat, they're sort of like glass when you cook them. They're really crunchy and nice, so you get a really nice crunchy effect if you like that. Okay, so we get over to the flour, we put a little salt and pepper in that, and we dredge our chicken in the flour. So we're getting it nice and covered, and what's gonna happen is when we put that in our egg, to which we are going to add Frank's hot sauce, and some parsley, and some salt and pepper, make it a little spicy, get a little bing. When you put it in that, what's gonna happen is that egg and flour together are gonna make sort of like a glue. So what are we gonna to stick to that glue? Our magical panko breadcrumbs. So we're gonna take our, our chicken, dredge it in the panko breadcrumbs, both sides, and sort of pat it on there a little bit. It's a little easier when you're doing it a little slower at home, but it goes on real nice and easy. Make sure you get them on there, shake off any extra, and then what you do is you get a pan that's got some hot oil in it, like about an eighth of an inch of vegetable oil. You get it up to 350, 370 degrees. You drop the chicken in there and you cook it till it's really golden brown on one side. And you'll be able to tell without touching it because you just peek around the edges. You see, it's got a little bit of golden stuff coming up the side. And you know, it's just about ready to turn. So if it's a big wieldy one, unwieldy one like this one, you gotta be a little careful. Some of them go out real nice and flat, but I like this, this kind like this because it gets all these little fingers on it and they're really crispy on the ends. And boy, do the kids love that. Okay, so here we go. We got this ready to come out now. We're gonna bring it out, put it on the plate like that. So look how nice that looks. And those are those little crispy parts I was telling you about. Check that out. 
So what do you put with it? What I do most of the time is we get a little nice pasta. We'll put a little pasta on the side. See, that looks nice, right? Then we get some nice pasta sauce. You want some pasta sauce on the chicken? Absolutely. Okay, there it goes. We got a little reaction there. We're going to put a little parsley on this. We're going to put a little Parmesan or Romano, whichever one you like. And guess what you have? You have this week's Moss Man Pantry Raid. Just check it out. Don't even have to taste this one. I know it's good. Very good. And you know, you can also serve that cutlet with maybe a squeeze of lemon and some capers or something like that. Doesn't always have to be pasta and red sauce. But here we love our pasta and red sauce. And what goes best with that? Meatballs. Hey, everybody, making some meatballs here. Meatballs, Moss Man style. And I tell you what, at our house, meatballs are very important. So we have to do a very nice job. What I do is I mix all the small ingredients together first before I put the meat in. So I've got a couple eggs here. I've got an eighth of a teaspoon or a quarter of a teaspoon of cayenne, however hot you want it. I've got a half a teaspoon of black pepper. I'm going to put in half a teaspoon, a little bit more than that of uh, salt. And then we're going to put in what's really important, I think, fresh basil, fresh parsley. So what you do is you roll that basil up after you clean it and chop it up. You chop it up real nice and fine. And you get like one heaping tablespoon. And a heaping tablespoon means a lot. So that's like this much right here. I'm going to put that on top of that. Same thing with the parsley. We're going to put a heaping tablespoon of parsley on top of that. And when it comes to the garlic, smash the garlic. Peel the garlic and smash it really good and make little tiny pieces because we want a little bit of garlic in all of our meatballs. And then we're going to put in a half a cup of Parmesan cheese. And the better the cheese, the better the meatballs. I had a hot dog bun sitting around, folks, so we're going to put a little bread in there. One slice of bread or one old hot dog bun, not too stale, still a little bit of softness to it. Mrs. Gallucci taught me that. And what we're going to do is we're going to mix this together a little bit. And that way, when I put the meat in it, we're going to have all the ingredients already halfway there. That should make it a lot better. Okay, what kind of meat do we use? Well, you can use that meatloaf mix. It's got pork. It's got veal. It's got beef. Or you can go all beef. You can do a little veal, whatever you want. I go half and half. I'm going to put a pound of hamburger in here and a pound of veal. And we're going to work that in. Yes, I washed my hands a thousand times, especially in these corona days, right? So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to mix this together. When you mix it, you want to mix it well, but you don't want to beat it to death. So don't try mixing it with a mixer or something like that or you'll mess it up. Because you want these meatballs to be tender. So let's start making meatballs. However big you want them, you use a little ice cream scoop if you want. But you can do it like me by hand. Just like this, we're going to get the meatballs cooking in a little bit of olive oil and a little bit of vegetable oil. A little bit of vegetable oil keeps the olive oil from burning. Okay, we cleaned up the kitchen a little bit, and now it's time to turn the meatballs. And this is very important. You want to turn them when they look like this, because if you don't, they could break and fall apart or stick to the bottom of the pan. So we're going to do this all the way around. Okay, they're firmed up enough now that we can put them in the sauce, and that's how I like to finish them, because when you finish them in the sauce, you get this really nice flavor, and they stay nice and tender. And you notice how you see the parsley and the basil in them? That means if you can see it, you're certainly going to be able to taste it. Look how nice that is, huh? We let them firm up in there a little bit, and then we're going to serve them. It'll be meatball time. Okay, check it out. There's your lovely meatballs, everybody. Got some nice clean tongs here. Take it out of here like this. Put them in here, and I'll tell you what, put it with some nice pasta or some zucchini pasta. I'm going to show you how to do that in a couple days, where you take some zucchinis and make it into pasta, which makes it really good. Of course, it's good on submarine sandwiches. Just about anything, you can't go wrong with these meatballs. And I'll tell you what, they look good, they taste good, and you know what? They make the sauce even better. Check it out. Another dish from Moss Man's Pantry Raid. And the only way to make it better, folks, is some nice Parmesan cheese. Maybe a little fresh basil, a little parsley. And there you go. Natalie, I wish you were here. The best thing about these meatballs, they're nice and tender, soft and delicious. I hope you like it. Okay, when we come back, we're talking about potluck. What does that mean? You're lucky if you got some good stuff you can cook just hanging around the house.
Welcome back to New Day Cleveland. It's our special show about home cooking, especially in these times when you can't get out and shop as much as you used to. So I'm thinking about looking in the refrigerator, you look around, you see something in the back, you see some eggs, you see some of this, some of that. What do you make? I say, frittata. Well, we're raiding Moss Man's pantry once again, and I was looking in the refrigerator, and I saw some stuff in there that looked pretty interesting. I saw a half an onion, I saw a little uh, broccoli, some salami, some tomatoes, and I'm thinking to myself, wow, with those eggs I've got in there, about six eggs, I've got six eggs, we're gonna make a frittata. Okay, we got two tablespoons of butter and a little bit of onion in there. So I was looking for a green pepper, but I could only find a jalapeno. So we're going to use a jalapeno, a little bit of that. It's going to be hot and spicy. We're going to use a little bit of broccoli, just the flower part of the broccoli. Had an old mushroom in there, about three or four of them. I took one, sliced it up real thin. A little tomato for color. You could use red pepper when you see the recipe on site. You're going to see a bunch of different ingredients. So that just means you can, you know, just go with the flow, whatever you got. We're going to put a little salami in there now. And we're going to push this stuff around and we're just going to soften it up a little bit. Okay, time to get some eggs out here. I've got six eggs, six nice eggs right here, and I beat them up already. So they're all ready to go. So what you do is just maybe a couple tablespoons of milk, the cream if you have it. You pour it in there. And we're going to give it a little mix around just so that we get the ingredients together. And we're going to let it firm up on the bottom. Just firm up on the bottom a little bit. And we're going to go to our toaster oven. We're going to put our toaster oven on broil. And we're going to put this in there on broil. Well, that starts to cook on the bottom a little bit. When it goes in the broiler, it's going to cook the top. Okay, I tell you what, there's no better way to clean up the refrigerator than make a little frittata. So there it is. We've got six eggs in there, so you can cut this as many ways as you want for four people or for two people. At my house, it'd probably be two people. If I cut it in half a little bit. Look at that. Get coming out of here low. And there you go. Beautiful frittata. Another half for somebody else. Put a little orange on here. Got to stay healthy, right? There you go. Beautiful frittata. Delicious, great way to clean out the fridge. It's another Moss Man Pantry made. So long. Good. Yeah, and that frittata, you can put anything you want in there, anything you like, and it's perfect. Okay, looking for something to make that's new. Where do you look? Where do you find a clue? I found one from the governor's wife. Well, it's time for another Mossman Pantry Raid, and this one is thanks to Fran, the wine, the governor's wife. She's really a good cook, and she's been helping a lot of people through this crisis with some ideas. And she was talking about chicken noodle soup, and she kept saying, like, do whatever you want. Do whatever you want, whatever ingredients you have. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to take her good idea, do whatever I want, and we're going to make chicken noodles. So how about that idea? So I threw in a little carrot. We got a little onion, a little butter, and we're going to let this cook until it gets a little soft. When I started this whole thing, I got ready with a half a cup of carrots, half a cup of celery, half a cup of onions, two tablespoons of butter. We've got a half a cup of milk or cream. And then for the bouillon, I use that better than bouillon stuff. I love it. You can keep it in the refrigerator and it's great. And I got some wonderful rotisserie chicken and we have some noodles already to go. I made them a little bit earlier. Okay, so that flour, here's what we're doing with the flour. We're going to sprinkle it in there real carefully and make sure it gets all over everything because this is going to be the base of the roux. And our roux is very simple to make, but what it does is it makes it thicken up, makes the sauce thicken. So when we add our chicken broth to this, after this flour cooks a little bit, we're going to start to get a thickening that's going to be perfect with our chicken and noodles. Okay, it's bouillon time. No bowl, it's bouillon time. That's right. So this is going to be something that we're going to whisk in. And look how that starts to cream together with that flour. And you don't want to put this in too thick because then you'll get lumps. It's like when you make gravy and you put broth with butter or broth with flour you get lumps. But see how that's starting to thicken and bubble a little bit? So we're going to get that in there and we're going to let this cook just a couple more minutes. Now this is the part I really like when it's starting to bubble like this. You see how it got nice and glossy, nice and thick? That means our roux worked, everything, everything worked great. Now we're going to put in a little cream. If you use a half and half, you can use milk, whatever. I just happen to have some cream sitting around. When you go to the store, you can buy cream because it lasts a long time. Just look at the date. So I'll always buy stuff that's got a great date on it. Okay, we got the cream in there. Now, guess what? We're gonna put some chicken in here. We'll let that cook up for just a second. Friend of wine, the governor's wife, turned this on to a good idea. In just a second, we'll put it in the noodles. Okay, check it out. I made these beautiful noodles here. 
nice egg noodles, made them ahead of time, rinse them so they don't stick together, and this is where we put them in, and we're going to put them in there sort of gently, mix, mix it around, look at this, look at this, chicken and noodles. This is going to be easy to make, folks. All the stuff's probably in your pantry right now, so you can give it a shot. We're going to get a little spoonful. The Moss Man Pantry Raid. We've done it again, I believe. Always a little parsley. You know how I like parsley. And there it is, folks. Delicious and ready to eat. Check it out. It's good. Best thing about chicken and noodles, everybody loves it, and boy, it is a great dish on a cold day. Okay, coming up, let's see, we've been doing the show, what now, six or seven segments? It's time for dessert. Let's have dessert when we come back. time for dessert. Welcome back to New Day Cleveland. And this first one is an oldie but goodie. I stole it from a relative. It's Bunt Cake. Ooh, check it out. It's hard to believe something so beautiful started out with something so ugly. Guess what? This is a banana cake, a banana bun cake. And this started with about four, well, four bananas that look like they should be in the garbage. But that is the best way to make banana cake. That's what Ananita says. That's what Kim says. And so what I did was I smashed up four big bananas and I got all my ingredients together, got ready to mix this thing and put it together. If you got a hand mixer, do that. If you got a stand mixer, do that. But here we go, let's just put this baby together. Now, Antonita and Kim both say this is very important. So we've got our sour cream and what we're gonna do is we're gonna put baking soda in it. And this baking soda is gonna cause a little bit of a chemical reaction here. And then we're going to put baking powder in our flour. And now we're going to cream the butter. So we've got one stick of butter. We're going to put that in there let it beat around a little bit. Creaming means make it like nice and creamy. And then we're going to throw in some sugar. Two cups of sugar. This is incorporating really nice. And we'll put the eggs in. It looks like it's going a pretty good job. So we're going to let this mix a minute and then get back at it. Okay, so our baking soda with the sour cream made this sort of fluffy. See, it almost looks like a marshmallow a little bit. Now's when we're gonna start adding some stuff. We're gonna add some sour cream, we're gonna add some flour, and we're gonna add some bananas. And we're gonna do this back and forth until we have a nice batter. The one thing you don't wanna forget, which I almost forgot, is a little bit of vanilla, one teaspoon. So we're gonna put a teaspoon of vanilla in here, and then, it's not in Antonita's recipe, but this is the way Kim does it, and it's fantastic. We're gonna put some chocolate chips in here. And just mix them in a little bit, there we go, and we're off. Okay, so we got that done, right? Take this out. And we go to the bunt pan. You can put this in a loaf pan or whatever, but we sprayed with Pam baking spray, this bunt pan, and then we're gonna put it in the oven. How hot? 350. 350 degrees, you heard it from the boss. 40 minutes. 40 minutes. So you pull it out of the oven after 40 minutes, you put a toothpick in, if it comes out dry, it is ready to go. You let it cool about a half an hour, knock it out of the bunt pan, and here we go. This is where you can really cash in on the Moss Man Pantry Raid. And Anita, thank you. The recipe is gonna be online. Kim, thanks for all the tips along the way and the beautiful, beautiful video. And here we go, folks. We're gonna get a nice little slice out of here. And here it is. Look at that, nice and moist and ready to go. A little taste. It's good. You're going to like it. And of course, you can add your favorite ingredient too. If you like cranberries, dried cranberries, or something like that, just toss them in the bun cake. It'll come out perfect. Okay, here's a really weird one. This one surprised me. It's a chocolate cake made in a crock pot. Okay, who said this was a crack pot idea? It's not. It's a crock pot idea. And the idea is, we're gonna make a dessert in the crock pot. We're gonna make a chocolate pudding cake, and it's pretty easy to do. So I start off with two cups of sour cream right here. We got that going, and we get a box of chocolate cake, this regular chocolate cake. Take out the wrapper, you don't need the wrapper in there, right? 
Set that aside, and how about some chocolate pudding? So you get the pudding, it has to be instant pudding, not the kind you cook, instant pudding. About four ounces of that. Get it in there, little rascal. And we're gonna put in some eggs. We got four beautiful eggs. It's all going in the crock pot, that's right. Or the slow cooker. We've got three quarters of a cup of vegetable oil and one cup of water. Now we're gonna start spinning this real slow because I don't wanna have to wear this, right? So we get it going like that. So you guys get a little look at that, right? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna combine all these ingredients. So let's go over those ingredients once again. So you get a nice box of your favorite chocolate cake. And I got the four ounces of pudding. It was actually about five ounces, but I just put it in there anyway. It's pretty close. It's crock pot cooking, so it's pretty easy. We got the vegetable oil, just three quarters of a cup of that, a whole cup of water, two cups of sour cream. Now you see how this is all coming together real nice? So we gotta get that powder going real good. I'm gonna turn up the heat now. You don't need a big mixer. You could do this with a spoon if you want. We're gonna cook this for six hours on low, so you have to keep an eye on it. And we're gonna put spray in there so it doesn't stick. So you're gonna spray the whole thing. Try not to spray yourself. Don't inhale a bunch of it because you'll get slippery breath, right? Now we're gonna pour this in there. Oh, first, a cup of chocolate chips. Look. Don't forget the chocolate chips. Gonna make it extra special. Okay, in it goes. And we're gonna set this baby at six hours on low. So this is an old one, so it says eight hours. So I'm gonna set a little timer for myself. There you go. Put the top on it. I'll see you in a couple hours. Okay, here it is. Check it out. What do you think of that, folks? I cheated. Five hours and 15 minutes instead of six hours. So let's see what happens to us. We're going to dig in here, and we're going to serve this up with a spoon. I want to just give it a good look at this right there. This is what it looks like. I'll turn it over a little bit so you can see that side. Of it. See how nice that is? This is the first time I ever made it, folks. So when that came out of there, I was smiling and I was happy. I'll tell you that. So what do we put on it? I'm thinking a little whipped cream would be really nice, don't you? And how about some berries? And then I was thinking ice cream, but I'm thinking, I can't wait for the ice cream right now. Look at that, just melt off there because it's hot. It came out hot. So you can let it cool down a little bit if you want. We have to taste this thing. Crock pot, chocolate, pudding cake. It's good. I think it's a winner. We've done it. No crack pot, crock pot. I tell you what, I was surprised by that slow cooker crock pot chocolate cake. It was really a dandy, and I think folks are going to love it. I hope you enjoyed the show. This is one of those shows that give you some ideas, and I hope you can cash in on them. Look around the pantry. Go through the refrigerator. Cook up some pasta. Make some meatballs. Have some fun. It's all about home cooking, and it can be delicious. I'm David Moss, and I'll see you on the next New Day Cleveland.